Hello and welcome to this webinar. My name is Joaquin Garzón, project manager for North Africa in Andalusia Trade, uh, an agency that you you all know, but uh, set up by the regional government of uh, of Andalusia in southern Spain and dedicated to helping companies from the region do business abroad and to channeling uh, foreign investment to Andalusia. Today, we will focus on the agriculture sector uh, in Egypt and the food sector in particular, uh, particularly on the Food Africa trade show that will take place in the beginning of December in Cairo, um, which is the largest trade fair of the African continent uh, in the sector, and to which Andalusia Trade is organizing a trade mission. In a country of more than 110 million people, food is of paramount importance and, uh, and a sort of opportunity for all and for uh, uh, foreign companies. And, and that's what we're trying to, to focus on here today. Let me please start by introducing our guests today. We have uh, David Garay, which is uh, his CEO and co-founder of Indigate, a consulting company with uh, extensive experience helping companies do business internationally and, and uh, uh, which is the antenna of Andalusia Trade in Egypt. Hello, David. Welcome. Hello, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joaquin. And, and we are so very fortunate to have with us uh, Dennis Casapoglu. Uh, Dennis is Senior Project Manager at Messe Dusseldorf and also International Manager of the Food Africa Trade Show. Hi, Dennis. Welcome and thank you very much for being with us today. Hi, together. It's nice yeah. to be here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Dennis will have to leave early, so we are going to change a little bit our schedule and start with her and then allow for the questions that you may have for her about the show. And then we will we'll, we'll, we'll go on with, with David. Before we begin, uh, I just would like to encourage you to post all the questions that, that you may have using the chat that you will find in the right side, on the right bottom side of your screen. And uh, please ask or write at, at any time without an interrupting anyone. And, and then we'll uh, read the questions uh, uh, publicly for all. And you will also have the possibility of turning on subtitles uh, if you think they can be of help in the lower left corner of your screen. Uh, so please, without uh, further introduction, let me give the floor to Dennis. Dennis, the floor is yours. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. And it's so nice to be here. So I will share my screen so that everybody can see um, the short introduction about Food Africa, as you mentioned. So, um, the Food Africa um, have um, two sides, so it's Food Africa only for the food side and the pack process is like uh, the packaging industry and post processing industry. I don't know, somebody is uh, visiting also Interpack. It's uh, held every three years in Düsseldorf. It's the biggest trade fair for packaging and processing in Düsseldorf. So, and the pack process is a little um, Interpack in Egypt. And this year, it is every um, every year in um, in Cairo. So, uh, let me give you a short introduction about um, who we are. So, we are organizing the trade fair with three partners. So, Messe Düsseldorf is international, is uh, in charge of international countries like also Europe, and IFP is in charge of the Middle East and GCC states. And um, and for sure, our Egypt partner is. Uh, uh, is in charge of the Egyptian companies. So, um, so Messe Dusseldorf is not only doing business in food trade fairs, we are doing also in steel, we have um, medical technology, we have exponential, we have a lot of trade fairs all over the world so that you have a, a short view and you are welcome to visit all the shows all over the world. And, um, so the Food Africa, uh, and I'm so happy to be here because Andalusia and um, Spain is one of the interesting countries for us as an exhibitor and also for a visitor. Um, and Food Africa started um, really with two uh, halls. It was really a little uh, in 2019. Uh, and now uh, we have this view uh, has changed now to 
uh, this view. So we are nearly overbooked and we don't have any space left anymore for this year because, the, um, as I mentioned uh, before, the Food Africa is the biggest uh, food show in Africa. So that's why it is so important to get um, European countries also to this area because we are targeting I'm really sure that you all, um, that you know the Gulf food and all the trade uh, fairs in the Middle East, but we are targeting more African countries as buyers to come and um, that they have different kind of products from Spain, France and USA. And so this is the most target for Food Africa and Egypt. And also, as you mentioned before, is Africa has a, such a big um, uh, potential for, I know Africa is like, okay, Africa is Africa, but Africa is so big and the whole world is fits into Africa. So that's why there is a huge potential to bring all the products also in machinery or um, food is the one of the biggest potential products for Africa. So that's why the new focus after, I don't know, Russia or Europe or US or China is Africa. So this is the new country or the new continent um, which uh, companies invest in these countries. I know there are some challenges, but Egypt is one of the safest and uh, for import and export, one of the greatest countries ever, I, I can say, because we are working for Food Africa since now uh, 2019 and it's the ninth show so and it's getting bigger and bigger and there is a huge potential also for Andalusia companies uh, in case of food and um, the packaging industry. Um, yeah, as you can see, these are numbers. So we have different countries are participating also from the visitor side, but the exhibitor side. And now we are increasing also for this year. These are the numbers from last year, but we are increasing now new countries. And um, as I mentioned before, there is no no more space left. And um, we are all um, thinking about to open a new pavilion because we are overbooked uh, also one one um, or two uh, months before the show. And I think this is a good sign also for the industry to invest that there are a lot of people and um, uh, uh, companies that they are thinking about to invest in Africa in the future. Uh, so these are all uh, also numbers um, who, where they are coming from. And it's 80% from Africa who's participating in the trade fair. Um, and who is coming is also interesting because Food Africa um, and PAC process has different profiles. So, uh, for example, visitors from Food Africa are potential exhibitors for um, pack process because they are coming from different kind of or they are coming for different uh, topics and they are searching for packaging solutions. For example, um, Coca-Cola is coming to Food Africa to uh, doing business uh, on site, but they are looking for packaging, um, packaging or filling or beverages um, technologies in Egypt, for example. So that's why there, is, there are a lot of interesting top buyers from different countries and from different um, profiles and companies. Um, yeah, the exhibitor profile, Food Africa, except every every kind of uh, every kind of uh, food categories, from oil to uh, coffee, from dates to beverages. So everything is welcome. And also the profile for pack process is like food processing. It is also labeling, it is packaging materials, it is everything. So it's a very huge profile. Um, what is really also interesting is for the participants maybe, we have a um, big hosted bias program where different kind of people and profiles are coming to um, and participate at the hosted buyers. There are a lot of African um, buyers um, who are searching for different kind of technologies and food 
categories. And for this year, we are started also to include it in the matchmaking program. So you have a possibility to um, catch them on site. If you are visiting it, for example, as a visitor or exhibitor, um, you have the possibility to uh, know the hosted buyers and um, doing some appointments on site, because this is also a big point that everybody wants to come to the trade fair, but the most challenging thing is to find the right buyers to your product and the other way around. And hosted buyers are always searching also uh, some kind of products. And it's very interesting if you are coming, for example, as a visitor, you can uh, do your visitor profile in a matchmaking program and somebody will contact you on site so that you can meet on site. We have a hosted buyers launch where you can uh, get a meeting and schedule a meeting on site. Um, yeah, the big sectors for Food Africa is um, especially for Egypt is the dates. Dates is the biggest one, the, the biggest uh, product in Egypt because uh, Egypt is one of the biggest countries who export the dates in different countries. And I'm really sure also to Spain. Um, and another sector is the Fresh Africa. Uh, it's like the um, food attraction in Madrid. It's the same, same product category. Um, but it's one of the biggest and uh, interesting products for Egypt because Egypt needs all these kind of products also for import, but Egypt for sure will also uh, export different kind of uh, uh, citrus uh, fruits and nuts and so on from different countries. But they are, they are importing also, for example, oil um, and um, nuts the other way around and uh, a lot of kind of dairy foods. Uh, so that's why it's a demand market. Uh, especially in Egypt because of the population. Um, yes, and for sure, the, every trade fair has a um, conference program. This is also very interesting because there are trends like uh, what is the food industry in, in the African market? What is the, we are working them with the Food Export Council. And if you need also the contact, we are all, uh, also on site and uh, we can get you the contacts, the right contacts on site. If you need, for example, somebody from, I don't know, from Nigeria, so we can connect you with the guys and uh, you can talk with them in, in case of uh, biz doing business in uh, Egypt or different countries. Hub visitors, also interesting, is like, you can see th these are all uh, the, the logos from some of the top buyers who's running in the Food Africa show. And um, we can also link you to, to these guys because we are um, uh, very, very close to them because uh, they are coming every year as a visitor or hosted buyers and they are searching for new products, uh, especially, for example, Egypt Air or I don't know. So it's, it's very, very interesting. And um, yeah, and you have the possibility to catch them at, at the Food Africa show. So um yeah this is uh in every trade fair uh, as i mentioned is the the conference program the cooking show and the barista show is a must so you can go and uh, take a taste uh, on on the coffee or i don't know so some some uh, kind of food so you can eat a lot of things uh, at the food africa show or taste spices for example it's very interesting because the egyptian uh, trade fairs are like different because they are selling uh, through the aisles. So it's allowed to to sell um, and uh, going along the aisles. And uh, yeah, that's why you can taste everything. Um, yeah, these are our sponsors. It's only for your information. Um, yeah, so that's all from my side. So it's, it's a little introduction to the both shows uh, uh, in December. Thank you very much, Denise, for the introduction. Uh, um, I think for us, uh, it's too, too late for for yeah. for for being on the show, uh, but not not to visit the show. Uh, mm -hmm. well, Andalusia Trade is uh, organizing a, a trade mission for companies that who that want to visit the show for the mm -hmm. first time, uh, and. Uh, 
what you said about the host buyers program and the matchmaking program, I think mm -hmm. that, that's a very interesting opportunity that we will uh, try to get advantage for. Um, and uh, with the help with, of our antenna in Egypt, we are going to channel those opportunities mm -hmm. for, so that they can maximize their their visit to the to the show. Absolutely. You, uh, I have a question for you uh, before we uh, about uh, you. You were speaking about uh, there are some concurrent shows. No, uh, we have uh, Food Africa. Mm -hmm. and we have Pack Process mm -hmm. uh, as particular uh, show about dates, about fresh produce, mm -hmm. also about fisheries or fishing industry. Is that is that also uh, and and is it organized in different pavilions or everything is sort of uh, all all together or? Okay. Yes, we have um, we have um, um, as I show you before, the different halls have different kind of um, main sectors and one hall is only fresh and frozen food, for example, and they are also a part of fish food because now we receive because, you know, the trade fairs always um, show you the market situation and we are receiving now a lot of um, fish producers or fish uh, trade uh, trade companies from Australia they want to so because it's frozen and as I said before Egypt is one of the biggest countries or for in Africa as a population they need food especially for example uh, fish and fresh and frozen food so we have a lot of stra frozen strawberries we have a lot of um, fish food it's frozen so mm -hmm. th that's why it is a Definitely, it's a demand market. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Hossam Leheta is, uh, is our, our, the, the director of Antenna in Cairo. He's, uh, he's traveling today, uh, but and he's joining us. Thank you, Hossam. How are you? Very good. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. I'm actually connecting from uh, Dubai. Uh, Denise, nice, uh, nice seeing you in person. Uh, yes, you too. Uh, I, I think because Joaquin was asking, of course, you must know better than me, but we're hearing from Egypt that they're going to give you an extra hole. Uh, uh, somebody from our office told me that they will do that. So there, if that's true, there might be an opportunity for Spanish companies to be exhibitors. Uh, yes, sure, sure. So we expanded um, uh, because uh, the uh, four halls in Egypt, they have only four and they have a, um, not like permanently, but they have another additional hall, all five. So, and now we rent it uh, for this show uh, very immediately because we received a lot of countries also also from Spain. Um, and uh, for sure, uh, if if you have potential to visit this year or as an exhibitor, for sure we will find a spot. But um, uh, as you know, the deadlines are very fixed. So that's why I think it's um, we are accepting um, exhibitors, but um, that should be very uh, a fast decision because mm -hmm. some of them I want to uh, get some information about the pricing and uh, also the logistics for sending their product. That's why I think it's a little bit challenging for now. But uh, like individual um, exhibitors, we are accepting. For example, I received today an application from Spain. They are always uh, they are also trading different kind of frozen uh, foods. Uh, so for sure, we are accepting them because they have to organize it very immediately. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, as as you say, for us, it's definitely too late to mm -hmm. arrange any kind of a Spanish pavilion or Andalusian pavilion. But we Absolutely. will be happy to forward uh, you, if you don't mind, Dennis, any inquiries that we have from any company who may want to be interested in, in exhibiting directly uh, to, to sure. forward them to you. So maybe you can, uh, they, they will have time to, to do so. In any case, we will be organizing our, our trade our trade mission to to visit the to visit the show. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have any questions from from our audience today. Uh, David, do you want to 
would you like to to share uh, uh, how the the trade mission will be organized and and, and why we pick uh, uh, food africa as a as, as an ideal we think a uh, way to yeah i to get acquainted I have a with presentation <clears throat> uh -huh. a brief presentation uh, denisa what time do you have to leave uh at quarter to 12. okay so you you have to have to, yes yes i have so that, yeah, like this you will practice a little bit of spanish Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> okay, let's see. <clears throat> so, can you see my screen, guys? Yes. Okay, great. So, well, basically, um, I will I will uh, switch now to Spanish for all our Spanish companies um, as, attending to the to this um, webinar. Uh, we wanted to go just through this uh, presentation very quickly so that you have a, a hint about. Uh, the the market and about the trade show that we are talking about um, sabemos que, que Egipto es un mercado muy importante para, para las empresas eh, españolas y andaluzas en concreto porque está en el Mediterráneo es el mayor mercado del Mediterráneo es decir, el mercado con mayor número de habitantes en todo el mar Mediterráneo estamos hablando de 110 millones de personas y muchos más que ahora en el futuro porque este mercado con la tasa de fecundidad que hay eh, y de natalidad eh, no va a parar de crecer el número de habitantes en los próximos eh, 50 años. Por lo tanto, un mercado posi para posicionarse, sin duda alguna, para todas las empresas del sector agroalimentario. Eh, este mercado, eh, aparte de ser un mercado muy grande en población, también es un mercado muy grande en superficie, es más del doble que España en superficie. Eh, es un mercado con un Producto Interior Bruto altísimo, de hecho es la segunda economía hoy en día de todo el continente africano, solamente por detrás de Sudáfrica y, y vemos que, que hay sectores eh, muy potentes, obviamente como el gas, el petróleo, eh, la, industria, la industria química, pero obviamente esos 110, 120 millones de personas tienen que comer todos los días, eh, por lo tanto el sector agroalimentario es, es clave ¿no? en, 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 este, en este país. También, obviamente, el sector turisto, el turístico, como sabéis, pues es, es muy, muy, muy bollante en, en Egipto durante los últimos 50 años. Eh, no nos vamos a parar en, lo, en los indicadores básicos, que bueno, que eso los podéis ver en, en internet si estáis interesados, pero bueno, eh, Egipto obviamente es un país de diversificado, donde las importaciones y las exportaciones y la balanza comercial, pues depende de los sectores, pues hay algunos que son más importadores, otros más exportadores, pero en cuanto a agroalimentario... Eh, siguen importando muchísimos productos. Lo, los, eh, los intercambios entre Egipto y España, bueno, pues eh, eh, por una parte se, se redujeron las importaciones y las exportaciones, pero bueno, eso fueron justo después de, del COVID y, y yo creo que a partir de ahora vamos a empezar a ver un incremento tanto de importaciones como de exportaciones entre los dos países. Los principales productos que se, que se intercambian entre, entre estos entre estos dos países, pues obviamente uno de ellos es alimentación, bebidas y taco, ¿vale? Que es el, que es el tema que nos toca con, con, esta, con esta feria, la de, la de Food África, ¿de acuerdo? En cuanto a Andalucía y Egipto, bueno, pues te, tenemos, tenemos eh, unos intercambios también, obviamente, eh, de más de 3,6 millones de euros de, de exportaciones a Andalucía. Eh, bueno, pues ha descendido, pero eh, eso estamos hablando que es desde el 2000, 2008, tenemos que que retomar esa, esas cifras actuales y, y, y ya veréis cómo, cómo vamos viendo que va, va mejorando sin duda alguna. Los acuerdos comerciales que hay entre Egipto y la Unión Europea, bueno, pues un acuerdo de la asociación con la Unión Europea que eso beneficia mucho los intercambios entre los dos países y, y lo, que, lo que tenemos que en, en hacer, eso sí, es eh, encontrar eh, importadores, distribuidores que no tengan problemas en pagos internacionales, ¿vale? Esa es la clave también que ya a, os, a las empresas que vayáis a Africa Food en diciembre, ya os haremos un briefing para, para que lo tengáis en cuenta. La industria auxiliar agrícola, esto fue la, la feria que, que asistimos en, en septiembre, ¿verdad, Joaquín? Estuvimos en, en Sáhara. Y ahora la que nos toca es Africa Food, eh, bueno, que es un sector, como os comentaba antes, que es básico para, para el desarrollo del país por el, por el gran número de población local. Y luego no solamente eso, es que Egipto también tiene empresas que importan y distribuyen a otros países de la región, como son Sudán, como es Etiopía, ¿verdad? Entonces, bueno, pues eh, es, un, es un país bastante interesante, no solamente por su mercado, sino por los mercados circundantes. Tenemos que tener en cuenta que Etiopía y Sudán juntos 
tienen casi 200 millones de personas más. Por lo tanto, estamos hablando entre Egipto, Sudán y, y Etiopía casi 300 millones, lo cual es casi la población de Europa. Por lo tanto, imaginaos la, la importancia de, de, de este mercado y esta, y esta feria. A ver, ¿por qué? Vale. Bueno, hay muchos desafíos, obviamente, el tema de la, la, la cadena de frío, pero está incrementándose muchísimo la, la infraestructura y, y las instalaciones para, para el frío, incluso congelados, por lo tanto, hoy en día no es como hace unos 10, 15 años que había problemas para la cadena de frío en Egipto, ahora mismo ya ese problema está subsanado y se va a subsanar mucho más porque se están instalando muchos, muchos centros de, de congelación y de, y, de, y de almacenes de frío en, en el país. ¿Vale? Entonces, bueno, pues eh, estamos viendo que eh, se están mejorando muchísimo los controles también de plagas, los controles de fitosanitarios, los controles de pesticidas, etcétera, por lo que los productos europeos cada vez tienen más cabida en, en un mercado como, como Egipto, ¿de acuerdo? Eh, dentro de los intereses de, del sector, bueno, pues eh, cada vez hay más eh, multinacionales extranjeras, cada vez eh, se están recibiendo más productos europeos y de otros eh, continentes, y, por lo tanto, están cada vez más ávidos de, de nuevos productos a importar de gran calidad y de valor añadido, ¿no? Como los que tenemos en las empresas de, de Andalucía, por, por supuesto. Entonces, bueno, la de Food Africa y APAC Process. La de Food Africa, pues como sabéis, es un punto de contacto, bueno, entre, entre todo lo que son productores y, y compradores dentro de, del sector del agroalimentario, ¿de acuerdo? Este es el mayor evento de, del sector en, en el continente, por lo tanto, todos aquella, todas aquellas empresas andaluzas que quieran entrar en el continente africano, este, este es su, su evento de referencia, ¿de acuerdo? En el sector y, y, por lo tanto, si bien este año se va a organizar la misión comercial como visita, esperemos que al año que viene, pues eh, si las empresas muestran interés, podamos organizar también un pabellón si, si fuera posible. Vamos a, vamos a ver si es si es posible, pero lo primero es ver que, que hay interés por parte de las empresas andaluzas por visitar el evento y luego, una vez que se visite el evento, ver esa, esa, eh, ese interés por uh, tener un pabellón al año siguiente. Se celebra en el Egypt International Exhibition Center vale, y será las fechas del 3 al 5 de diciembre, en principio. Ahora, ahora le vamos a preguntar a, a Denise que nos confirme. Eh, los sectores, principales sectores que hay, pues bueno, pues aquí los veis. Estamos hablando de pues, todos los sectores de agroalimentario, en, en realidad. Antes comentábamos que incluso los productos congelados, ¿de acuerdo? Eh, y bueno, algunos, algunos porqués de, 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 de ir a esta, a, esta, a esta feria. Bueno, la primera de África, eh, con multitud de países internacionales, con multitud de importadores locales, eh, que se ha duplicado en capacidad del año pasado a este. Eh, y, y por lo tanto, bueno, pues estamos viendo un crecimiento exponencial, ¿no? Dentro de la feria de Africa Food, como comentaba Denise, también tenemos el Pack Process. El Pack Process es aquella, aquella parte de la feria que está dedicada a, mmm, bueno, pues todas las necesidades que hay en el sector agroalimentario del packaging, ¿no? Pues están también cubiertos ahí con empresas que buscan buscan encontrar nuevos métodos de, de packaging o que ofrecen nuevos métodos de packaging, nuevas, nuevas soluciones. ¿De acuerdo? Por lo tanto, bueno, pues eh, eh, matamos dos pájaros de un tiro, como, como aquel dice, ¿no? En esta feria, no solamente los productos, sino también el, el packaging que es tan importante para el sector agroalimentario. ¿De acuerdo? Eh, dentro del pack process, eh, bueno, pues tenemos empresas de todo tipo de, de, de packaging, ¿vale? De, de maquinaria, de aparatos, de materiales, eh, de nuevas tecnologías, de accesorios, eh, incluso de, de servicios y digitalización ¿no? de, de todo lo que es la industria del packaging agroalimentario. Eh, por lo tanto, no solamente empresas de agroalimentario, sino también empresas de packaging eh, andaluzas que quieran eh, visitar esta feria, pues sería muy interesante para, para ellos, todos aquellos que quieran entrar en Egipto, África y, y Oriente Medio. Muchísimas gracias y, y bueno, vamos a ceder la palabra ahora eh, a Denise, le vamos a preguntar. De hecho, uh, Denise, uh, I have I have one one question. Um, for for the packaging, you have seen also a, a growth as you have seen for agriculture or um, or food uh, products exhibitors. The the increase has been the same or or more in the side of um, agriculture or, or food products. Uh, the increase. So I have to say, um, Food Africa is like 
four holes and a pack process is only one hole but mm -hmm. uh, only is like uh, very relative because uh, the packaging industry is um it's different like food because food they can exhibit from all over the world and packaging industry in egypt is like it's a little bit challenging but um the one hall is overbooked like from egyptians and different kind of countries because we have uh, for example we have a big um, german pavilion we have some i think from spain we have from china from we have from italy and um uh, and the packaging industry has a lot of uh, competitor um, exhibitions so that's why some of the exhibitors have to look okay uh, should I come to Interpack or should I go to Anuga Food Tech or should I go to Gulf Food Manufacturing uh, and uh, because Gulf Food Manufacturing is in November so most of them are going to uh, Gulf Food Manufacturing but they are also coming to us because they have different kinds of uh, audiences uh, mm -hmm. as a visitor it's different from Gulf Food in Dubai. Yeah, you, you mentioned that that in, in food um, uh, pavilions, you will have many African importers. Is that the case also for the packaging uh, pavilion? You have uh, um, uh, exhibitors who are manufacturers or you have also importers from Africa willing to buy packaging? Yeah, as a, the the exhibitors are uh, they are not uh, Africans, but the buyers are coming from African countries, oh, okay, and they are searching for the right product to produce. For example, I don't know bread in Nigeria or something like mm -hmm. that. So mm -hmm. that's why the fo the main focus is like food processing for Egypt. But um, yeah, because it's they building synergies to each other. You have uh, at the one hand you have food Africa, and the other it's packaging pro so it's. It fits more for food processing and packaging. And it's confirmed that the dates are from the 3rd to the 5th of December, right? The 3rd from the, yeah, yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Eh, entonces, empresas que estáis aquí, si tenéis alguna pregunta, mmm, la podéis hacer en español o la podéis hacer en inglés, como os parezca bien. Eh, y, y la respondemos, a, vamos, a, vamos a aprovecharnos de que está aquí Denise y, uh -huh. y responder cualquier pregunta que tengáis. As a matter of fact, we have one, one question from, from oh, yeah. Acesur, uh, one of the main companies, uh, main uh, exporters of, of olive oil in Spain, um, uh, asking uh, if there's real potential for mm -hmm. olive oil in, in Egypt uh, or, in, or particularly in the, in the trade show. Because uh, they say, I know Egypt is a producing country, but do you think there's still demand for olive oil from other countries? Is there room for? Yes, absolutely. So that's why I, I, I'm really, it's very uh, interesting that the exhibitors are thinking about, I was also, also thinking about uh, some years before, it's like, ah, uh, Egyptians have everything and they are producers for, I don't know, their own dates and so on. But um, Egypt has a population which is not comparable, like different countries. They need everything from uh, from other countries also. They are producing, but it is not enough. So they need more because it is like we have a lot of uh, olive oils, for example, from Turkey also, because it's a different kind of uh, brand or the taste is different. And so that's why definitely it's a demand market. So it's a different kind of, um, and I know Spain is the one of the biggest export uh, olive oil exporters for uh, the whole world. So that's why it's very well known and they know, ah, okay, from Spain, they are coming oil, so that's why definitely it's it's a demand market, definitely. Well, actually, actually thank you, Denise. But actually, I think uh, Hosan also maybe he could uh, give us a hint about uh, the olive oil demand in in Egypt, right? Yeah, I, I actually agree with everything Denise has said. The market in Egypt is quite a large market, and even though there is a lot of uh, olive plantations and there is a lot of cold pressed extra virgin olive oil. Uh, the majority or almost maybe 99% of the olive oil is for export. And we have a lot of off takers on the plant of the on the plants. And the manufacturing facilities, so even as an Egyptian, it's very, mm -hmm. I will buy the Spanish, uh, the Greek and the Italian olive oil off the shelf. 
uh, and I will only get the Egyptian olive oil as a present from a friend that does have a farm because they don't offer a lot of the Egyptian uh, olive oils are very premium and they don't, you, you will not find them in the market. One of them is, uh, I actually have a picture here because a friend was asking me for it. This is from a place called Wedi Natun. This is where they make the olive oil and they make the very fancy olive oils. And uh, it's also, this has happened to be off the shelf. And those are the two maybe best selling olive oils in Egypt. There is this one, which I think is Spanish. Uh, so this is very popular in Egypt. And there is this one which a certain variety of chefs will only recommend. Uh, so yes, the opportunity for olive oil as a finished product in Egypt is, is quite large. And mm -hmm. as Denise rightly mentioned, we're, we're over 100 million. We're not quite sure how many, but definitely over 100 million. And there is a lot of demand for olive oil, Egypt being a Mediterranean country. So it's in all, all the foods as well. So. And Definitely as I nice can add, it is not only, so I ha I have to say this every time to the potential exhibitors and visitors, it is not only focusing Egypt because Egypt is easier yes. to come for, for example, African countries. It is easier to come to Egypt because, yeah, you, 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 you saw Africa is not so, uh, from Nigeria to Egypt is, I think, a six hours flight. So it is not for, for, for the exhibitors that it's easier to come to uh, Egypt and not to Europe, for example. And that's why it is, that's why it's so interesting to come to Egypt because it is not only the Egyptians, they are also from the GCC states and African uh, visitors and exhibitors. They are focusing different kinds of audiences. So this is also too important to know. Very important, and it's also important to mention that there is trade by ground, by trucks that yes. actually export from Egypt and will travel into Africa, especially yeah. the landlocked uh, cities in Africa. There is a lot of trade between Egypt and uh, Kenya, Nigeria, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, um, and also with the North African countries, and uh, this is also this is a Tunisian olive oil that's also very popular in Egypt. That's amongst the trade between Egypt and Tunisia. But okay. but yeah, as Denise is mentioning, there is a lot of trade into Africa through Egypt. So so you will find that the the whole African market might be very attractive. I think that answers the answers the question is. Uh, Pablo from Assessur was also asking, is it possible to know if visitors from many other countries in Africa are coming to the fair? I think the, ans the answer is definitely yes. And uh, uh, he thinks you mentioned Nigeria, maybe as a standing out uh, from all, all the countries that, that, that are visiting. Yes, yes. So it's 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 like the focus. We are uh, focusing more. We are doing a lot of marketing activities for Nigeria, Tanzania, Uganda, um, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, um, Kenya, um, and there are a lot of activities because we um, visiting, for example, competitive um, uh, competitive trade fairs all over the world. For example, we were in New York at the Fancy Food Show, and they had hundred African exhibitors, and they are selling, for example, ananas to Egypt. So that's why, for example, ananas is one of the or pineapple is one of the interesting fruits for Egypt. So, um, but uh, the exhibitor is um, is not very well known with this kind of, for example, what is needed. What I can give you also after this call is like, um, what is a, a demand product for Egypt. So we prepared it for us, for our, our exhibitors. Um, maybe it's also interesting to know, ah, okay, these kind of products are very demand and very interesting to import it to Egypt, for example, or the uh, uh, African countries. And also, um, I know Spain is also a good producer for, um, I don't know, um, like sweets. Sweets is also uh, a, a very demand uh, product in Egypt. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it is so like it is like uh, everywhere is like sweets and uh, dates and and so on. So this is also a very interesting uh, uh, product in Egypt. Maybe more important yes. than water. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>
No, actually, one other thing going back to the, the African countries in representation and Nigeria and Kenya yeah. in specific, there, uh, not just that visitors from those countries will be the target market if you're looking to sell over there. There are Egyptian traders and wholesalers yeah. that their entire business is to sell to Kenya, Nigeria, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, uh, all the way up to Angola, uh, yeah. uh, way, way in the West. So uh, if you do manage to meet the traders and wholesalers, some of them will be Egyptians, but they will be the key to enter those markets and they will deal with other wholesalers directly. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so that's I I don't know uh, it's going to take a bit of luck maybe running into them during the exhibition, mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of people their business is just to facilitate trade with Central Africa. Mm -hmm. And always, this is this is also my last word for for trade fairs is always the same. It is like also in Germany, in Madrid, in New York, everywhere you can go is like. The, the expectation from the exhibitors or from the visitors has to come from their own um, uh, like dynamic or goal. Because if you are sitting, for example, as an exhibitor, I always uh, very close with my exhibitors. And I was like, OK, you are sitting there with your mobile phone and nobody will come to your booth because you are looking not so interested in this market. So you have to stand up and talk with a kind of, I don't know, if somebody is looking for your product and your booth, then you have to talk with them directly and to know, ah, okay, uh, you know this guy and this guy knows another guy. And then you can um, catch up new uh, contacts. But if you are sitting only in, uh, I don't know, also the same like in food attraction in Madrid, if you are sitting there, so nothing will happen at, the, at this time. So that's why I think it's always to add to say, okay, if you want to do business in some countries, not only in Egypt, then your goal has to come from your own uh, dynamic or your uh, promotion or what else. So you can also invite some different uh, companies to the show. We have a lot of possibilities. You can come always to me because I am. we are the organizer for Food Africa. We can do everything. We can organize uh, a meeting with, with uh, uh, important hosted buyers, but it has to be come from your side what you needed so i can give you um uh, the contact but i need your information what what do you need for example or what are you searching for okay denise thank you very much we know you have to leave we we'll, yes we'd unfortunately like to, you're you're very busy we know that uh thank you so much for yeah thank for you being too here today with uh, explaining in in first person uh what we are going to to find in 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 africa in food africa and i mm -hmm. uh, hope to see you there in the in the show yes hopefully so you are always invited to come and see and uh, as a um, visitor and uh yeah and i gave you the information about the products and so on after the webex so you can forward it to the members that, that sounds great thank you so much Thank you, Thank you all. So Thank you, Denise. See you. Thank you, Denise. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Okay, guys. So um, I, I don't see any more questions from the company. So everything is very clear, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I, ha I have a question for you, uh, uh, Hossam, uh, about the foreign exchange and and the the it was mentioned it, it, it was a problem uh, before it, it is not so much of a problem now and particularly not, not in this sector which is uh, of, of, of of great importance and, and a priority for the government can you maybe elaborate on that a little bit yeah the, the problem with foreign currency this had existed about a year or a little bit uh, over a year ago and it has been solved there was a point in time where uh, banks were not making uh, foreign currency available unless with very strict conditions this is not the case now now banks are opening lcs are uh, uh, opening uh, transfers for personal use for business use so everything is 
is more relaxed and agriculture is a critical agriculture along with uh, healthcare and uh, uh, energy and education are the critical industries. So even when there is a crunch period, usually agriculture does not suffer. Also agriculture because agriculture tends to be a net exporter. Uh, so banks are very cooperative with the agricultural facilities and the farmers because they tend to export, so they tend to have their own foreign currency. So this is, this should not be an issue the same way it was uh, a year or two ago. Uh, this this has been resolved. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Hassan. I don't know if we have any more questions. Si tienen alguna otra pregunta. Si es así, creo que podemos dar por terminado el, el, el webinario. We can we can close here if you if you, if we have no more questions. Eh, Bueno, simplemente decir que las empresas se pueden apuntar, ¿no? Y siempre pueden estar en contacto contigo, Joaquín, para apuntarse a la misión de diciembre. That's right, that's right, exacto. Les, les dejamos, les voy a dejar el, el email de tanto de Osam como de David y como el mío propio. Y para cualquier, eh, para que interese en la misión, pueden contactar con, con nosotros. Y también si tienen, como decía Denise, eh, si tienen interés en, en ver las posibilidades de, de, de ir como, como exhibitors eh, en la feria, eh, pues también podemos canalizar su, su, su cuestión para, para Denise para que les procure responder en ese, en ese pabellón adicional que se va a habilitar. Exacto. Muchas gracias a todos gracias. Eh, por, su, por su atención. Y, y esperamos verles pronto eh, en Egipto y, y también aquí en, eh, en Andalucía Trade. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Josan. Thank you, Joaquín. Thank you, Josan. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.